Alan Watson uh, has an extraordinary number of strings to his bow, but the one that is particularly important for us today uh, is that Alan is chairman of Havas Media UK, a company I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Havas do all sorts of market research, branding, and communications work. And one of the things they've undertaken recently, which is of extreme sort of relevance to many of you in this in this hall today is they've just undertaken the most massive survey of international uh, public perception, asking 30,000 people in markets right around the world to think about what brands mean to them and what they regard as the most important signifiers uh, to differentiate between brands they care about and brands, frankly, that they could live without. So it's my great pleasure today to have uh, a man who can come up here and talk to us about the in-depth research and what it means for businesses like yours. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm welcome to Alan Lord Watson. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here. Now, I'm going to share with you this morning, as we've heard, the findings of a survey carried out this year by Havas Media on brands and sustainability. Sustainability broadly meaning what brands tell you about the commitment of the brand and the company to building social capital, to making society work better, <coughs> to improving the condition of the environment. It is the biggest survey of its kind that's been attempted and which is quite important for us. It's the second year that we've done it. So that's enabled us to have a tracking perception of how brands and their positions have somewhat altered. What has emerged, I have to say, is quite surprising and in some ways disturbing, particularly perhaps when we have looked at what consumers believe motivates corporate social behavior by companies. Well, the first question which is quite surprising but very important, is are consumers concerned with issues which, if addressed by brands, would make them more meaningful to consumers? Now, of the top ten concerns that people expressed, these were the most important. A sustainable economy, education, the environment, waste, climate change and global warming, depletion of natural resources, particularly water, and health. Interestingly, terrorism didn't appear in the top ten concerns at all. Now, very important about these concerns, because we've been listening a lot about China and Asia. And it's a very easy assumption, but a false one, to believe that these concerns are peculiarly Western that actually with the tremendous driver, the momentum of economic growth in Asia, they don't have time to be worried about these things. Why should they bother, for example, about the environment when their need for energy is so ravenous? But our findings were quite surprising. When we really asked consumers where they would place their concern about the environment came right at the top, and it came right at the top, not in Europe or the United States, but in developing countries. So take Brazil, 62% vote for that, up from 54% last year. China, well, this is very significant, nudging 50% as a concern, uh, 49 actually, up against 45 last year. India, a remarkable surge, 57% putting this at the top, compared with 47% the year before. And Mexico, 54%, up from 39%. And now these figures are much higher than the global average, which is 34%. And why is the global average so much lower? Well, ladies and gentlemen, because the figure for the United States is 25%, the figure for the United Kingdom is 19%, and you do a bit better in France at 
Now, what is extraordinary about this, if you think about it, is that these great concerns about the environment and about waste and about allied subjects as well, also very high ratings, come at a time of unprecedented economic crisis. Now, of course, China and India have been growing through the crisis, but they have been fully aware of it. And you might well think that given what was going on, they would put these considerations aside. Given this hierarchy of concerns, what do consumers actually expect companies to do about these concerns? What do they expect? Well, 83%, up from 80%, 83% believe that large companies, and I quote, should be actively involved in solving social and environmental problems, 83%. And then here comes the second finding. Only 29% believe that large companies are actually making much of an effort to do that. Expectation, 83%. Belief, inaction being taken, 29%. Now, don't fool yourselves that actually consumers are sitting around saying, well, at the end of the day, it's up to governments. Governments have got to tackle these problems. That's not what they believe. Indeed, only 24% believe that it's the job of government rather than that of business, down from 30%. So why do they place the onus on companies and the brands of companies? I don't have an, a, a clear, hard answer to that, but I suggest that it's probably a combination of believing, first of all, that companies may be culpable, they may be contributing to the problems people want to have solved, and secondly, that they're capable, they actually can do something about it. Now, if they can do something about it, what would motivate them? Well, here again is a finding not too flattering. 68% felt that companies would do this for self-serving reasons. In other words, and I quote, only to improve their image. Well, that's not a bad thing in itself. Indeed, it's an imperative. You have some strands here which are very clear. The expectation is clear. Expectation that companies will do something about these things and a wish that they do. Values. A definition of values, the things that people are concerned about. But the way companies promote their values at the moment and how they implement them for the social good has not persuaded consumers of the connection between brands and sustainability. People expect more from companies, but if anything, they believe less. You need people to feel good about what they buy. They want a product which in many ways enhances their self-esteem. Now this of course must mean products that are good, namely stylish, glamorous, enjoyable, good value. But I believe it also means brands and companies which do good. In other words, which contribute to the quality of life for us all. Alan, thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Lord Watson. Thank you very much.